Hi, in this lesson, we're going to add the final element that will not only make our programs more robust, but allow users to choose which variables they want to solve for. Going back to this example of a compound interest calculator, I could choose which variables I wanted to input and which I wanted to solve for. In this case, we're solving for time and years. Alternatively, I could have entered a different variable. In this case, I chose to enter everything except P, the initial amount of money invested. We want to write a program as flexible as this one, where the user can choose which variable to solve for, and the program automatically adjusts. In order to do that, we need to introduce the if elif else statement. Okay, let's talk about this statement. I promise it looks easier than it looks. An if else statement in Python executes specific code depending on whether certain conditions are true or false. It looks something like this. To begin, we must have a first line that starts with the word if. Then, if we want, we can include the else statement. A very important point here is that only one of these statements will actually run. Next, we have conditional expressions for the if statement that will evaluate the true or false, which we'll see examples of in a moment. Each of the if else statements must have a colon at the end of the line. Under the if statement, we write the code that we want to evaluate if the condition is true. The code under the else statement will execute only if the condition above is false. The important point here is that only one of these statements will run. Finally, the code that you want executed must be indented. And that's it. Let's look at a few examples to see how this actually works. This example reads as the following. If 6 plus 3 equals 9, print first option. Otherwise, print second option. So, which option will print in this case? First option since 6 plus 3 is equal to 9. Once this happens, the program does not evaluate any of the statements that follow. Let's change the first condition here. Whenever you see an exclamation mark and an equal sign, this means it's not equal to. Now the first statement says, if 6 plus 3 is not equal to 9, this is false since 6 plus 3 equals 9. So we go to the else statement and print second option. We can also do this with variables too, which might look something like this. Now it says, if num1 plus num2 is not equal to 9, print first option. Otherwise, print second option. The actual option printed in this case depends on the value stored in num1 and num2. And finally, we don't just have to work with numbers in the conditions either. Let's look at this example. Here, we're saying if the string value stored in the variable choice is equal to string a, then print the first option, otherwise print second option. We can even take out the else statement too. Here, nothing happens if the string value stored in the choice variable does not equal a. To make this even more interesting, we can put an if statement inside an if statement. Let's read this through. It's saying, if choice one is equal to a, print first option. Then, if choice two is equal to b, print second option too. We have to be careful because this is different than this one, because here, the second if statement is not inside the first one. Let's look at an example. Here, we set the value of choice one to equal C, and choice two to equal B. Can you guess what snippet of the code will be printed? On the left, since choice one is not equal to A, nothing inside the statement gets executed, and nothing is printed. On the right, choice one is still not equal to A, so it doesn't print first option, but then the program moves to the second if statement, and since choice two is equal to B, second option two is printed. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with if else statements and how you arrange them in order to customize how your program functions. Let's head over to the live editor to see some of this in action. Let's put all the things you've learned so far together by creating a program to ask a user if they'd like to carry an item in their inventory that we have in stock. If the user replies yes, we'll print a menu of the items we have available. If they say no, we'll just say okay. Great. So let's first prompt the user with a yes or no question. And we will ask them, would you like to carry an item? Yes slash no. So yes or no. Using an if-else statement, we can help our program make decisions based on the user's input. So 
we can have an if statement that says, if the answer is equal to yes, we can print some things we have in inventory. So let's say we have a couple of things, seeds, and we also have a hammer. If the user says no or otherwise, we can just say that's okay and not show a menu. So let's print that's okay. Okay, let's test this program. Would you like to carry an item? Yes. And it prints seeds and hammer. Let's run it again. And this time we'll say no. And it prints that's okay. Okay, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's have the user, after printing the menu, choose which of the two items that they'd like to carry. So let's create a little bit of space and we'll prompt the user to make a second choice. So let's actually update our variables to choice one and choice two, since they're making multiple choices here. So with choice two, the user will respond to the following question. From the list above, which item do you want to carry? Okay, so the user will then look at the list above, which is seeds and hammer, and will make a response. So we can use another if else statement to help our program make decisions. So if the user types in seeds, we can type a message and then otherwise we'll type a different message. Okay, so let's add that to our code. So our first if statement will have the condition is choice equal to seeds. So we would write choice two and we would use double equal signs, which checks for equality. So whether choice two is equal to something and we'll write seeds. So this condition reads is choice two equal to seeds. And if it's true, let's print a message. So we'll print, go find yourself some fertile land. Otherwise, or probably they decided to type in hammer, we'll write, it's hammer time. Cool, so now let's rerun our program to see all of this working. Would you like to carry an item? Yes. Okay, it prints seeds and hammer. From the list above, which item do you want to carry? Let's try seeds. Go find yourself some fertile land. Okay, next time we're gonna type hammer. Would you like to carry an item? Yes. And we're gonna write hammer. It's hammer time. Cool. Now it's your turn to try this code for yourself.